What's going on YouTube? This is Mason AJ with the official now I'm here to bring you my review of issue one of the brand new Black Panther solo series comic book by Marvel. And that this, this book in particular has a lot of controversy surrounding it. Not only because of the writer, but not only because of the character, but also because of the fact that this is coming on the eve of the upcoming Captain America Civil War movie, which has the Black Panther in it. A lot of people all across the board, whether you're for it or against it, have been looking forward to this book. And I'm here to bring you my thoughts on it. Now, Black Panther is a is a major cultural hero to a lot of different people. Not necessarily to me. I've always re related more to Luke Cage when it comes to my Marvel African American heroes. Definitely don't relate to Blue Marvel. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. A lot of people like Black Panther because he's a leader of his own country. He's a scientist. He is a warrior. He's an extreme tactician. He's listed as not only a major figurehead both politically in the in the Marvel Marvel comic book universe, but also personally within a lot of other main heroes' lives, such as Captain America and Iron Man and also to his much beloved Storm. And I have never really been, I have never liked the solo series of Black Panther. Not saying they were bad, they were very good, they just did not resonate with me. My personal favorite has always been the Christopher Priest um, particular run, run of the line. And I thought that was very, very well done. And, and that's, that actually, I think it's like my 14th favorite solo series of all time. Mm -hmm. Just about, we have 14, maybe 14, maybe 15 favorite solo series of all time. Now, the writer of this book is Tallahassee Coates. Now, this has been a very big controversial move for Marvel because this is actually Tallahassee's comic book debut. This is his first comic book right here. Now, he's but he is also a very accomplished, very esteemed writer who's actually more known for writing for the Atlantic with both world and in both stories when it comes to world politics as well as his own short stories. And he actually has won numerous awards. So, do not get me wrong, Tallahassee, I mean, excuse me, Tallahassee is no joke when, when, it, when it comes to writing field, but a lot of people feel that because Black Panther in particular has not really had a time to shine in his own life, that giving it to, to what they consider a amateur when it comes to comic writing is it leaves it, it is not giving the book the full support that they want. Where other uh, people on the other side of camp feel that because of his talent in world politics, he's going to bring a level of nuance to the story, that which has almost never really been done, especially with this particular character being such a both a superhero and a politician and a world leader of his own country. Now, for me in particular, for what I've read of the book, he's doing a very good, solid job, especially, but this is still only issue one, and I'm still very much interested to see where it goes. Now, within issue one itself, a lot more, a lot of the writing is centered more on the world bending, building, and character development of the of the world of, of the Black Panther comic book, rather than the Black Panther himself, which is both very intriguing because it, it's you can obviously see the story elements which are going to be which are going to be very big placements in the future issues but also you gotta, you gotta, what you, I want to see more of Black Panther with regards to what he's doing I want to see more of the man himself and it feels like in this particular issue that he is in turn more of a side character even though the book has his name on it don't get me wrong it's the equivalent of Luke Cage and Iron Fist being being in their own comic book but we're focusing more on the people who hired them rather than the characters themselves which is which does not mean that it's a bad book. This is more obviously more story driven rather than character driven, but Phil, for me in particular, I want to see more character, but the story that is setting up is still very good. Now, Brian Stelfies is the main artist of the book, but he's working hand in hand with legendary color color artist Laura Martin, who we also personally met here at the Aficionados, and we also when she was working on the Star Wars book. And I, I gotta say, Brian himself does a really solid job, but I wouldn't really call it spectacular. I really do feel it's the color of the book, which to pretty much transcends the art from the page like into your soul, and looking into it, it reminds me a lot of the Wicked and Divine comic book with Matt Wilson where even though the art is really good without a doubt, it's the colors that really kind of give everything like edge and shadow and shape and really make you really like feel the world that they're living in. Now going into it with the writer, the main artist, and the colors this is a really solid team and really does inspire a lot of confidence in me in particular where this book can really go forth in a lot of different places. The book itself covers a wide variety of themes where both when it comes to politics family, um, a little bit of LGBT um, in essence over in there with, with introduction of two lesbian characters um, and so far and I feel like they're touching on so many different issues that the book itself is trying to tell you stories that tell stories within themselves where the stories go beyond just you know, the, the, simp the simplistic format of uh, the hero and the villain but more try to speak to the people that are dealing with with, with, with these issues which ultimately makes, makes it feel like you're, you're not just reading a comic book, you're almost reading a comic 
book novel, or I guess in turn, graphic novel. But the thing that we're here to understand the most is in fact the story itself. The story takes place right after T'Challa has pretty much reassumed the Black Panther mantle, mantle after his sister had previously died fighting in the Thanos world. But that the people of Wakanda, that this once super powerful nation, which we've always felt which we've always visited Wakanda before, but it always felt like we were there as like tourists. We never got to see like the real deal of Wakanda. It's like kind of like going to New York and the only thing you see is like the Statue of Liberty and like the Mets Theater and Mets Stadium and like that, but you never really go, you never really step outside of Manhattan and go to Brooklyn to like where like the real streets of New York is at. And now I feel like in this particular book, we're getting to see the real essence of Wakanda. We get to see the, the mining system. We get to see the Golden City, where the, which is pretty much the capital of Wakanda and how that differs and how people in different aspects of the country have a certain different political viewpoint on T'Challa as a leader but then also the Black Panther lineage and maybe the, some people are even feeling that the Black Panther lineage has pretty much led them astray and that they should maybe form their own politics you know or, or politics and there's also a separatist movement operating within that and you see how what we are establishing as the villains are sowing seeds of dissent throughout all the communities of Wakanda to pretty much use them as a rallying force to fight T'Challa and, to, and it leaves T'Challa with an enemy that he can't he can see and know it's there but he can't quite hit because he doesn't want to hurt his own people he's still very much a leader but the real conflict when it comes to him him as a character is because because now they're calling him the orphan king is what is his place as a leader and, and does he deserve the right to continue to rule Wakanda after both the invasion of Thanos the invade the war with the Atlanteans the loss of his sister and everything else you really do feel the weight on his shoulders and the thing I say about this unlike Superman what what I pretty much consider Black Panther the almost a Marvel equivalent to Superman when it comes to cultural icons where Superman does deal with so much but I never feel like Superman have any real problems at the end of the day. Superman don't ever worry, really worry. I mean, and that's really more goes with the writing of that particular book. But with this book, with Coates leading this writing till, I feel every much the emotional impact of every decision that that T'Challa has to make as a leader. But then also made when he has to sit back on his own throne and reflect on himself as a man. Now I, I know I've told you a lot, but I don't want to spoil the book for you. I want to encourage you guys to go read the book for yourselves, and of course comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you've read the book, how do you feel about the art? How do you feel? About the story, how do you feel about the previous runs of Black, pa Black Panther as a solo series and as Black Panther as a member of the Avengers and the Ultimates and also, um, what was it, the Cabal? Was it the Cabal? Um, the, oh, the Illuminati, that's what it was. I was and it was the Cabal and the Illuminati, I got those two confused. But you know, me as Mason AJ, I love to talk about comic books. This is what I live to do. So tell me, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Facebook, um, hit me up in the comment down below. Um, let me know how you guys feel about the series. If you guys have other series you guys want to hear, hear my opinion on, you have to hit me up in the description down below because I ultimately want to hear what you guys have to say. This is Mason AJ with the official and I just got done reading The Wonderful World of Black Panther Issue 1.